Housing data cooling from some record uh, home price growth and buying uh, apartments and condos sight unseen. Maybe some of that cooling expected, but has it taken a turn into concern? Let's talk about this with the managing director at Emphasis Digital Risk. Jeff Taylor is the co-founder. Uh, Jeff, welcome to the show. Tell us about what you guys uh, do at uh, Emphasis Digital. Yeah, Hunter, thank you so much for having me today. What we do at, at, at Digital Risk is we are the largest residential mortgage managed services provider in the country. So on behalf of big banks, um, money center banks and large lenders, we process, underwrite and close loans. So while we're not a lender, if you do all the services that we provide, we would uh, generate probably around the eighth uh, largest amount of residential mortgage loans in the country while we are not directly lending on, on our own behalf. Okay, great. So a uh, perfect uh, uh, person to be here to help us figure this out. Uh, what's going on, Jeff? Is this expected a slowdown from untenable heat in the housing sector during COVID, or is this uh, more uh, economic risk that we should be pricing in? Yeah, you know, look, we had the perfect storm for two years. We had, you know, with rates basically at two, two and a half percent. Uh, and everybody being sort of locked at home or working remotely, the market to market just, you know, home price appreciation jumped double digits each year. What we're still seeing right now is basically a little bit of a cooling off period. On existing home sales, we've seen those down for the last three months. And now you have a 30 year fixed mortgage that's at five and a quarter, whereas in six months ago, it was, a, it was three and a quarter. So you're seeing um, existing sales slow down a little bit. Home builders are still doing very, very well. Their challenge is supply chain. Can they get enough materials to actually meet the demand they have? And then at five and a half percent, you do, I'm sorry, five and a quarter percent, you still do have that affordability issue now that comes in to say, okay, if I've been looking to buy a house for the last eight months and I'm getting outbid in all these bidding wars, all of a sudden maybe I'm not getting into a bidding war, but can I afford that monthly payment? at a much higher interest rate. And those are individual life decisions that consumers are having to make in their areas, seeing if it now really is the best time for them to jump into the housing market. So uh, how much is uh, this gonna depend on which side or which kind of bracket of the housing market we're talking about? Is there gonna be a, uh, a big difference emerge between the high end stuff where uh, people still have a, uh, ability to you know uh, pay up money versus the new home buyers because I would imagine that the spike in mortgage rates is a bigger impact for folks that are obviously taking loans whereas I mean, we all saw with the huge uh, growth in assets the last couple of years people were paying down cash for uh, very high end homes two million bucks the toll brothers department do we see a big difference uh, potentially in kind of the next phase of this housing trend it's a great question. So let's break it into two buckets that you put it. For solid cash buyers, I don't know that Riley rising interest rates isn't going to change it that much. What it may give them some reprieve would be on the continuous bidding war. So right now, I think this time last year, I think we're looking at 82% of houses in the higher end were in bidding wars. I think that's down to about 52% mm. year on year right now, right? So there's a little bit of flexibility there. But now when we shift back into that, First time home buyer, that move up home buyer, yes, they are definitely being affected by the tightness of inventory and and uh, and the mortgage rate and, and, and rising mortgage rates. So, you know, that all comes back to the thing we've been talking about for a while. From 2011 to 2020, there were 6 million houses that weren't built because that millennial group, which is now the biggest group in the housing market, were kind of renting or they were living at home. So that's still one of the bigger issues that they're dealing with. So again, in that group right now, they will be much more sensitive to interest rates uh, as far as what their affordability will be as mm. you move forward, especially in this summer housing season. Now, is, the, uh, uh, is there any clarity on the cost of building homes on the supply side for that uh, uh, kind of impasse we had that gap with uh, not enough housing uh, supply. If the if the prices reflect demand coming off a little bit, does that e equilibrate some? Uh, should there be kind of a natural limit to how much prices drop given that there's pent up demand for homes that w weren't built quick enough? You know, I had a good uh, conversation with uh, Laura Escobar, who's president of Lenar Homes the other day, who's America's largest home builder. And they still are in that great spot that if they could build them fast enough and if they had all the supplies, 
they feel extremely confident that they could you know build as many houses as people could buy and i think the same is the same with pulte mortgage and dhi so that home builder segment is still really worried about can i get the supplies to actually build the houses can i get there quick enough and then there is a little bit of a dynamic right now uh, that's also popping up that if you ordered a house eight months ago right and now you're going to uh lock in your mortgage right now because the, ho- the house is almost ready and getting close to uh being able to be bought you know you you know the individual buyers might be paying more than they thought they were if they did their math sort of where mortgage rates were eight months ago where they are today but overall i think you've got a great amount of runway for home builders in in the coming years and again that all ties back to the one major major point that we didn't build around six million houses in the last decade that those people are now looking to uh, jump into the housing market and they're not putting anything back into the housing market meaning they're not selling a home to buy a new one these are literally people who are renters or people who are living at home mm. and uh jeff so the the rise in rates uh, has the potential to kind of slow down some of the uh, newer buyers, but not so much the higher end. Uh, does that mean that the housing build out uh, will respond accordingly? Or should we expect uh, there to be a, a push to the housing side for more of the kind of higher end? Or is there generally just like a uh, a pool of homes sitting, uh, uh, waiting. I mean, that's it's quite the opposite, right? There's going to be a need to still build. Yeah, there, there, look, there, there is not a pool. I don't think there's a pool of homes sitting anywhere nationally, right? right. At, at pretty much almost any at, uh, at any price point, looking for people to come in and, and buy. So I think it's still going to be driven by uh, home builders building new houses. Uh, obviously, you have spec builders who are building. You know, maybe you're not the large home builders are building one or two houses here and there. And then, you know, we're still seeing, especially with a record amount of home equity in the housing market. So this is the longest, you know, it's like $21 trillion. People are really starting to tap home equity lines versus potentially having done a cash out refinance to improve their their existing homes. Um, And again, the thing that we still are seeing uh, across the board is this is the most fundamentally stable housing market I've seen in my 20 years. And what I anchor that on is, you know, maybe this year we don't see 15% price appreciation year over year, but we're probably still going to see three to six percent. And in 23, we're probably going to see three to six percent, right? So structurally, we're very, very sound, and people are looking to uh, to get into the housing markets, um, and I think that's a very, very positive sign. Okay, so maybe some explanation for why the builders are doing all right today is uh, even some of these uh, pending home sales numbers and a new home sales this week too, both uh, slipped, uh, maybe giving an opportunity to uh, meet at a new price equilibrium, a little bit lower, but one that makes uh, everybody satisfied, I guess, uh, potentially winners on both sides. Jeff, great details for us. Uh, looking forward to keeping up the combo. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Look forward to talking with you soon.